The desert heats up with some island sounds. The independent art world shows up in raw form and a group that uses their bodies to create melodic sounds. All that and more, so stick around. Front Row Center starts right now. I'm Honey Love. And I'm Zach Fuentes. And welcome to another episode of Front Row Center. You already know we got you covered on everything Las Vegas style. Yes, and we're kicking things off with some natural born artists who aren't scared to show their independence side. Nakaya Berry gives us a scoop. There's a lot of people that's very receptive and it kind of makes you feel like a badass. Having all the fun lights and everything going on, you know. It's a circus of creativity here at Rob Natural Born Artists, an organization welcoming all genres for artists by artists. It was a chance for me to show my creativity to Las Vegas. And that's the best place to show. It's a great event to come to because they have so much going on as far as fashion, makeup, art. It's really amazing. It's a lot of work, but the payoff is just so satisfying and to see um, artists who don't usually have a chance to be featured have the chance to have their art exposed to a large audience of people. The five-year-old company, Raw Natural Born Artists, is a community of independent talent. It showcases emerging artists in over 60 locations in the U.S. and internationally in four different countries. When I came to the Raw show, it was just like instant family and people have really supported my business. Raw gives artists an outlet to gain exposure to the community, meet other artists and get feedback about their work. My advice to artists is like, do good work, don't be shy, get it out there because people will respond. It's a great way to showcase my work and I've met a lot of other people. Um, it's been great networking. I've had people come up to me and say, I've seen your images on the web and that's what I want to hear. I want to hear that those images are making impressions and that even if they see those, and they never know my name, that the art still kind of continues on. Raw provides its artists a full media kit, including headshots, video interviews, online portfolio hosting space, and online representation. The artist is required to sell 20 tickets to their event in exchange. In Las Vegas, it's hard to get your work out there because there's so many people competing against each other. Raw is always scouting for talent online, but artists can also reach out to them at rawartists.org. And if you have what it takes to be a raw artist, you'll be invited to their next event. But I see us becoming a place where people who are looking to find local artists can search through our database of talent online. Raw, natural born artists of Las Vegas happens every other month, so come out and support your independent artists. Reporting for Front Row Center, I'm Nakaya Berry. She went from the courtroom to using her knowledge of law to represent clients in the business of arts and entertainment. Please welcome to the show manager, promoter, and entrepreneur, Paloma Solamente. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you so very much for having me. Paloma, tell me, how did you go from law to managing artists? I have asked myself that so many times. Uh, I was in the criminal field and working with attorneys, courthouses and everything. And one day I noticed, well, I always knew that I was not satisfied. So it was like 180 turn. Mm -hmm. And I started getting involved with the arts district here in Las Vegas. And it has been a nonstop story since then. So one morning you just woke up and you just had an epiphany. So <laughs> I actually went to see a play called Art. Okay about two blocks away from the art, from the, the Arch Factory. Never been there before. After the play was over, I saw fire, like actual fire within a walking distance. Uh -huh. And it was at the Arch Factory and I went, uh, Flamiology was practicing. And from that moment, I was in heaven. Wow. Now I know you dabble in the arts yourself. <laughs> you do poetry, you also make jewelry. Tell yeah. me about that. Uh, I was taught by my, my grandma and my mother and other family members how to work bead into jewelry, into hats, little things like that, mostly ac uh, accessories. Like, and it, it started a huge thing 
for me, like, actually, I was like, wow, I am an artist. I never pictured myself like that. And I was invited to events to showcase, uh, like, raw and little boutiques here and there. And that was another part of me that I was not, not that I wasn't aware of it, but I didn't recognize up to what degree it was. So it took being a part of the arts scene yes. to bring out the inner artist everything, of yourself, everything, right? Everything, everything. Um, I used to go to Human Experience uh -huh. at the beat downtown Las Vegas, but I was a quiet one sitting all the way in the back in the sofa. Like nobody knew who I was. Uh, after, I will say nine months, I ended up taking a microphone uh, and then I started my own open microphone in Henderson and I've been the host of Provoking Fusion for a year and a half. It's little by little, taking baby steps, it's growing mm -hmm. up and growing up. Now I have Logan Wrights as I'm like my co-host. Uh, my audience is my family. The, uh, Provoking Fusion is a place where I go to take a break mm -hmm. from everything else. And then at the same time, I have people dropping off pieces of art for the gallery, for Justin Lep uh, Dr. Leper Design Gallery, which I'm a proud curator of. So it's always, everything is art related, art related, yeah. like there's and no stop. And you can stop. find you, I know you're everywhere down in the arts district, at coffee houses, <laughs> art galleries, <laughs> everywhere. Are you also always looking for new talent to represent? Always. Uh, and people that approach me and sometimes I don't have enough time on my schedule, but if I can help anyone in one way or another, I'll clone myself. Right. That's fine by me. All right. Well, thank you, Paloma, for thank being you so very here. Much. And everyone, if you're looking for representation, <laughs> <laughs> Paloma can be contacted at palomasflying at gmail.com. All right, everyone, don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Coming up next in the show, find out what legendary reggae artist Don Carlos has to say about his fans. Don't go anywhere. Front Row Center will be right back. Welcome back to Front Row Center. Many tourists make their way to Sin City for the lights, pool parties, and of course the strip. But did you know many trek their way to our city just to listen to some of the hottest reggae bands around? Janelle Vinoy has the story. Great crowds, great food, and plenty of great music to jam to. The 13th annual Reggae in the Desert made its way back to the Clark County Amphitheater, and it did not disappoint. The amphitheater was packed from wall to wall, and I got a chance to talk to the producer of Reggae in the Desert, Frederick Apcar, to find out how the festival made its way to the desert and why an event like this is so popular. Clark County started this event uh, about 13 years ago and it was really to fill a void in town because we didn't have any reggae festivals or music, bigger music events like this. We keep the ticket prices low so anyone can bring a family. Many first time and multiple attendees come from California and even as far as Indiana to hear their favorite artists. Machek Savarsky made his way from Indiana to enjoy the laid back vibe and here. Barrington Levy, uh, Cully Buds. Jennifer Ash, who is a local of Las Vegas, has attended the event four times, and one of her favorite artists to see... I love Don Carlos. I caught up with the international reggae superstar to see why his fans love him so much. The fans always keep on coming, you know, and I love them, you know. Reggae in the Desert is such a successful event, put on every year since 2001. And if you want more information on how to keep up with who will be performing next year. Our Facebook is uh, Reggae in the Desert and we have an Instagram which is new but it's pretty pretty cool. Mm -mm. I can just smell the jerk chicken and the plantains now. For Front Row Center, this is Janelle Benoit. Oh, oh, no, no. You 
using only their bodies as instruments, Melody gives a whole new meaning to body percussion. The guys will have you saying, give me some mo. Please welcome to the show, Melody. Hey. Hi guys. How you doing? I'm very well, thank you for being here. All right, thank you for having us. Well, so tell everybody, what is Melody? Melody is an experiment in body percussion. And we, we say experiment because we're always changing and trying new things. Basically, our motto is we collaborate, we include versus exclude, and we see what happens. So it's all based in stepping and body percussion, everything rhythmic that you can do with your bodies. We try not to use too many instruments, too many outside sources. We try to see what we, the humans, can make sounds, uh, steps, slaps, claps, uh, shapes, dances, everything that we can express using just our bodies. And who came up with this name, Melody? Where does it come from? Uh, uh, Jason came up with the name. See, okay. uh, We started the group back in 2000 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, at the University of New Mexico, Jason was a student. He was a uh, sophomore, a junior, and I came on. Um, and we, we had a group covered in the cartel. We wanted to do something a little more serious. We wanted to really push the boundaries of what a step show could be. So we okay. started Melody. Um, and Jason had the name kind of already. Where did you get the name from? <laughs> I thought it was original. And uh -huh. then later, after Google came out, uh -huh. <laughs> I Googled it and I found that it's a Russian word. And the Russian uh, meaning is youth, like okay. children, youth, you know. So it actually kind of sticks to, you know, what, what we're about because we're all about the unlimited potential. We try not to put those limits and those boundaries on what we do. And so, you know how like when you're a kid, you okay. think you can fly, so you can fly. You think you're a, a cops and robbers, so you are, you know? It's, so it's that mentality that we try to take into rehearsals and try to take into creation when we create things. So you guys, the name just fits. It you fit. are destined to be <laughs> Melody. Yep. Now I know you teach people how to step, right? Yes. yes. And we want to know if you could teach Zach and I after your performance, like the basic moves of stepping. Oh, ain't but a short walk over here. We're going to teach you. Mm. Okay, we're, now we're I have to tell you, um, we did this the first season with tapping, and I have two left feet, so it was a no-go. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll try. All right, everyone, without further ado, here's Melody. One, two, one. Cool breeze. Your mic. Some mics. <laughs> All right. So everyone, they're gonna okay. teach Zach and I the basic moves. All right. All so what do we All need right. to start with first? <laughs> All right. Take some time. Take a couple deep breaths. I feel like we were moving. The floor was like vibrating. <laughs> it yes. was right. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll teach you an easy one. We just call it pity pat. Okay. It's gonna feel like it's hard, but okay. it's not. It's actually really easy. All right. Okay. Right foot. Pat. One clap. Hit your lap five times. One, two, three, four. Five. 
Right, left, right, left, right. Okay. okay. So two claps. <laughs> Try that from the top. We got okay. it. Okay. Oh, see, I already messed up. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Okay, 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 I'm ready. Here we go. Okay. Right, clap. One, two, three, four, five. That's the first half. Okay. Oh. We can rock that. <laughs> Let's just rock that. One. All right. Okay. And we'll make it rhythmic. Okay. And we just keep doing it over and over. That's it. I'm already off. Oh, I'm already messed up. You too. Steps. Clap. One, two, three, four, five. Clap. <laughs> Really? Because I'm already you, messing it up. Can you get a little bit more? I can do I'll more. Try. Okay, I'll give it as a try. As long as it's funky. Okay. As long as it's funky. We're going to keep it funky. Keep it funky. All right. Okay. So that's the first half. Second okay. half. Lift your left knee. Uh-huh. Right hand on your left knee. Left hand across your chest. Two times. One, two. Clap. Okay. So right after that, you got one, two, clap. You're going to oh. end the same way that you started the first one. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's try to put it together. But you got to say what we're doing next. Okay. I, I have bad memory. Yes, okay. we're going to do it. All right. Oh, Zach, we got right, this. Real slow. One, two, mm -hmm. three. Right foot, we got right. Clap. One, two, three, four, five. Hit, hit, clap. One, two, three, four, five. Right, <laughs> clap. One, two, three, four, five. Here we go. Hit, hit, clap. One, two, three, four. Close. One more time. Here we go. Right. Clap. One, All right, two, three, well, four, you five. guys do that. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. We'll five. move on to the next one, thing. One, two, three, four, five. Hit, hit. One, two, three, four, five. You feel that funky, though? <laughs> she said, <laughs> come on, come on, you got it. One, two, three, four, five. All right, Mugladi's next one, two, performance three, will be July 10th at 9 p.m. at the Inspire Theater in downtown Las Vegas. And for upcoming show dates, go to MiladiLive.com. Coming up, from mermaids to underwater models and even synchronized swimming, these evolutionary water beauties will allure you with their sophistication and grace. Don't go anywhere. Front Row Center will be right back. you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. This is what it feels like to be part of a team. A winning team. The action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? Dance, strength, and water come together in one of art's most beautiful forms. And these ladies are the epitome of just that with their combined national championships in synchronized swimming and their own natural beauty to boot. There's no wonder why the name Water Beauties fits so beautifully. Now we have two of the ladies here with us today. Please welcome Jenna Randall and Michelle Thoreau. Ladies, thank you for being here today. Hi. So you are part of Water Beauties, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Well, the Water Beauties is a company that we uh, perform in big events for companies. I also do fashion shoots for clothing lines, bikinis, um, and makeup, anything really that the companies want us to do, we'll do. And how did you um, get into this? How did you become a part of it? Well, with our background in synchronized swimming, um, when we moved to Las Vegas, we had a friend that was part of um, the Water Beauties and a co-worker, and she let us know about it and we decided to join. And have you had a good time since you joined? Yeah, we're fairly new. We've only done a couple events, but so far it's been great. It's been a lot Where'd of fun. Where'd you both come from? I hear an accent from you. I'm from England. England, wow, yeah. you made it all the way to Las Vegas. Yeah. How'd that happen? 
Um, well, I was an athlete before and I competed at Olympics and World Championships and I decided to retire last year, but I still loved the artistic side of my sport. So I wanted to kind of carry that on. And um, so now I perform in one of the well-known water shows in Vegas. So that's why I'm here. And you have a few accomplishments under your belt too. Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you tell us about them? Yeah, I've also competed. Um, I was a world competitor for synchronized swimming and I was on the US squad and then I also swam in college um, at Ohio State, and then after that, I moved here to also join. So you guys have had so. to have been doing this since you were little. Yeah. yeah. When did you start? <laughs> since I was young. Uh, I started when I was eight. Wow. Yeah. Eight years old, and you? Seven. Seven years, seven and mm -hmm. eight years old. There's kids I know that don't even swim at that age. <laughs> There's people I know at my age that don't even know how to swim. So that's amazing. What does it require to be a synchronized swimmer? I imagine like a lot of stamina. Mm -hmm. For sure. Can you tell us yeah. what it takes? Well, for synchro, the sport um, is made up of loads of different things. We do a bit of gymnastics, ballet, but also you need the swimming strength as well. So we do a lot of um, stamina in the water like normal swimmers do. And then also we do a lot of weights and flexibility, parates and things like that for our sport. So it's a really beautiful sport, but people don't see the conditioning that comes with it. It's really a lot, isn't it? Yes. So weights, and how do you breathe underwater for that long? I mean, you're not breathing, obviously, but you're <laughs> holding your breath. Does that come with the stamina and the conditioning? Yeah, just a lot of practice and just practicing holding our breath. I mean, after so many years now, we're used to it, but it did take a lot of practice. To Have there ever been any mishaps in the water or anything like that? Um, not since I've been swimming in my team, but um, there was two swimmers in the Japanese team for both Olympics that after the swim, they passed out and just sunk to the bottom of the pool because it's so intense. And you're, um, you don't have a lot of oxygen at all and uh, your muscles sometimes can't take it, so. It's probably a shock to the body, but so beautiful too and very fulfilling for you guys, I'm sure. What would you say to somebody who would like to be a part of something like the Water Beauties? A young girl, maybe. Any advice? Um, if you love the water and you love performing and being the shining star, then the Water Beauties is for you. It's great fun and um, we always have a lot of fun doing it and it's really nice to work with different companies and get to know their, their views on how they deal with things. Jen and Michelle, thank you so much for being here today. Thank, thank you. you. All right, so you can check out more information on these beauties on waterbeauties.com. And now here's Stepping Out with Nakaya Berry. Thanks, Zach. Here are the events I would recommend this week. Thursday, June 19th, did you know that Downtown Vegas has its own weekly podcast? The Downtown Podcast is to share stories, ideas, and people that make the Downtown Las Vegas community so special. Each episode records live as a show for you to see for entertainment. Yep, every Thursday at 9 p.m. Just go to downtownpodcast.tv to secure your space. Friday, June 20th, kicks off the concert series Under the Lights at the Container Park. On stage will be Colt, featuring American Cream, Technicolor, and Overjoy. This Friday is the first of the concert series. The next one's in July and August. Saturday, June 21st, for all of the sneaker collectors and shoe addicts, which I know plenty of in Vegas, and even for the non-enthusiasts, come sell, buy, and trade your stylish and custom footwear. The event is called Soulful Gathering. Get it? Check out the gear and bob your head to fresh music by local musicians at the Beauty Bar downtown at 9 p.m. Sunday, June 22nd, there's an event at the Brooklyn Bowl at the link called Reggae Bowl. There are many people in town, including me, who complain there's not enough reggae in Vegas. But there will be reggae DJs all night and performances, including Halimano and New Age Tribe. You can bowl a few games with friends while listening and dancing to the reggae jams. Doors open at 6 p.m. and show starts at 8. Monday, June 23rd, go chill at the Beat Coffee House downtown and listen to open mic performances at the Human Experience. This event happens every Monday from 7 to 11 p.m. Awaken your mind with spoken word from the community. Tuesday, June 24th, batter up. The Las Vegas Area 51s, that's our baseball team if you didn't know, is playing against the Memphis Redbirds at 7 p.m. at Cashman Field. Tickets range from $10 to $15. Wednesday, June 25th is the monthly musical showcase at the Cabaret Jazz at the Smith Center. 
local composers and songwriters present their original music material as an outlet for artistic expression. This is a great way to support some of the best performers and musicians of the Vegas entertainment and theatrical communities while also enjoying a diverse, eclectic, and high caliber of entertainment at 10 p.m. for $20. Well, that's it for stepping out with Nakia Berry. Back to Zach and Honey. Now, Honey, I really enjoyed that reggae story, and I know a lot of people here in Vegas love to listen to reggae music. I didn't know there was such a huge reggae community here. There really was, and I went to it, and let me tell you, Las Vegas came out in droves. They were all over the lawn with their blankets. There was food, wonderful, delicious food, and great music. It was amazing. Very hot, but amazing, Looked to say like the least. It looked like a lot of fun. Definitely It was did. so much fun. So uh, tell me about the water beauties. How did you like that interview? That was really interesting. You always see synchronized swimming and um, everything that goes with it as such a, a dainty sport. Not that there's anything wrong with being dainty or anything like that, but to know that they have to do all this conditioning, the weights, everything else that goes along with it, I really found that interesting, and I hope you guys did at home, yeah, too. Yeah, and how about that stepping? I think that... Step Stepping. You did a better job at it than You did than good me. too. Let's try it again. Come on, come on. No, you go ahead. <laughs> All right, everyone. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed today's show. Coming up next week, the classic show Cabaret comes to life here in Las Vegas with an exclusive performance from some of the cast members. And the Queen of Hearts, a very late rabbit, and the Mad Hatter all came together to celebrate art in its many forms. A look at this special event in our next show. If you have an event you want featured, email us at frontrowcenterlv at gmail.com. Or if you have a talent you want to showcase, you can find us on Twitter at FRCLV and hashtag FRCLV. To check out past episodes, you can log on to UNLV.TV. And like always, from the entertainment capital of the world, it's, it's Vegas, Vegas baby. baby, and it's all right here on Front Row Center. Good night. <laughs>